everybody, it's Steve. Today we got something different on the channel here. We got Honeywell. Uh, if any of you follow my LinkedIn, I'm kind of a fan of Honeywell this year. Um, I'm a Johnson guy, but uh, Honeywell has got some uh, amazing stuff coming out. Uh, today, what you're looking at right here is the Honeywell Optimizer controller. Okay, it's uh, I don't want to be wrong, but I'm I'm pretty much going to say it's the Spider Seven line. It's the unitary version on the Spider Seven line. Uh, the one I have in front of me here is the small version MSTP. So these come in uh, small and large. MSTP or IP or what they're calling T1L. Um, so T1L is something new that Honeywell has out this year. I'll show you a little diagram of it down here. It's, it's basically to replace lawn. So you have this T1L switch that they make, and you're going to do back net to that guy. And then it's a two-wire connection to all the controllers downstream of it making it uh it's it's a fast protocol uh let's see if i got the specs on t1l t1l is right here so here's kind of the specs on t1l it uses a twisted pair 18 gauge shielded or unshielded right uh, there's your maximal distance and stuff like that so it's something new that honeywell's brought out this year it's uh, so you don't have to run new wire on the lawn systems, but you will have to replace all the lawn controllers. It's, it's, it's not lawn. It's just made to use the lawn wire so you don't have to re run new wire for everything. But this optimizer is pretty cool. Let's, uh, let's review the specs here of it. So if I go all over the place, it's okay. Uh, let's start with the different models here. So, like I said, I have the small uh, MSTP version. That's going to be this guy right here. Uh, so I have eight universal input outputs. What's that mean? Uh, it means these purple right here can be either inputs or outputs. They could be either one. You're going to you're going to decide what they are when you program it. Now these orange up here are going to be relays and solid state relays. So we'll jump back into the specs here so you can see what's going on with that. And the large one has 16 universal IO, four so solid state relays and four relays. Okay? So, go down here. Like I said, we got uh, solid relays and solid state relays and universal. Uh, mine doesn't have this because I have the smaller version. Okay. Also on these, on all the, the new Honeywell controllers that they're putting out, so you have Silk Bus and you have an extra 485 Modbus port on these guys. So I can show you that right here. You got your MSTP. But right next to your MSDP is your second RS-485 for Modbus. Uh, I know Modbus is a bad word for a lot of us, but uh, Honeywell has some really cool sensors that are Modbus now, or Modbus capable. So you can use these IAQ sensors. Uh, they're basically TR-50s. I'll do a video on those, especially if I can get one in my hands um, soon. But that TR-50 can do uh, VOCs, it can do uh, particulates, it can do uh, CO2, humidity, and temperature. So it can do up to five different things. They have a three version of five version. The three does CO2, humidity, and temperature. And these things are cheaper than TR42 HCO2s, just so you know. But the, the the only drawback to them, they're just a sensor. You can get it with a display, but there's no set point adjust on them, right? So you can suck it in uh, to monitor a space, but no set point uh, adjustment at this time. And those things can do Modbus, BACnet, or uh, right now the three 
version of it can do silk bus and there's honeywell is saying that the later this year it'll do uh, the five version will do silk bus but uh going on next port over you got power silk bus that's for your um stats and if you choose to do a silk uh damper actuator they're still out there that's uh, kind of an expensive way to do it but if you run out of points you can use a silk actuator you got your universal down here at the bottom you got your relays up top and there's this red pin right here that shares the common of the relays so that that stabs in there so you're sharing your common here and then you got your solid state relays right here so let's go back in there to see the specs on the relays. And if we go down here, so our solid state relays works with 24 volts AC DC max, right? You got a 1.5 amp constant and a 3.5 amp inrush for um, 0.1 seconds for your output. So uh, pretty hefty duty. Um, 1.5 amps this is, is, is pretty good. But your relays, this is the star of the show right here. So your relays can pull in up to 277 volts AC. And then you get uh, three contacts, uh, normally open, normally closed, and common. You got a 10 amp constant current, a normally open contact, and a 100 amp inrush for 100 milliseconds. That's heavy duty. But you have a little uh-oh down here the total across all the relays is limited to 12 amps if you're using this jumper right here so if you have this jumper in you're limited to 12 amps total i don't even know what you're going to be bringing into a controller with 12 amps but uh i i i'm safe to say that that's a pretty heavy duty thing so that is the specs on this guy. The price point is really good. I can't talk about pricing uh, because everybody's multiplier is different. But the price point on the side is really, really good. And then uh, sensors. You're not limited to um, 10K and 20K anymore with Honeywell. Here's all the different sensor types that you can have. So if you're taking over a Johnson building, you can put in this nickel 1K right there. because most of the Johnson buildings are nickel 1K. Done. Platinum 1K, you know. So you're not having to replace every single sensor. It's especially a good plant controller for that. How do you program these? I'm not going to program them, right? But I'm going to show you how to how they, they set up. So you got your BACnet network right here. And all it is, it's the IRM. So it's the same as you've been the uh, programming spider fives uh the spider sevens and the new optimizer program the same way so you're going to throw a irm device on the back net network of course you'll name it right and then under your irm uh, configuration right here this is where you choose what it is so that's the spider fives i'm looking at the <laughs> RS eight forty four M S. This guy right here. So that's the controller that I have. I can hit save. Uh, down here on your onboard I/O, you would then go down here to your physical points. You go down to onboard IO packages and find that controller again. It should be RS RSRL. That's where I get confused. RS. 484 throw that guy on here and there it populates uh, your physical points for you see it already lays it out uh, for you if you that's the best way to do it 
and then you would put your programming either in periodic programming or event periodics time base it's runs um, the complete programs um, in milliseconds every so many milliseconds it keep, it looks at the programs and reruns it right periodic or event programs runs them immediately based on an event so a, a status change boom uh, it runs a program uh, if if it doesn't have an event i think that runs periodically don't get me lying i'm not the Honeywell expert. I just know enough about them to be dangerous. And then you would use this Honeywell IRM control palette to do all your programming in those uh, two folders right there. And that's it. That's the easiest setup. It has uh, binary dip switch addressing, which most of us are accustomed to. I know that Johnson kind of getting away from that. They're using the dials. But everybody seems to still understand binary, so that's not a problem there. It doesn't have that little film over it like the the classics, so it doesn't have a little tattletale, so you can easily change it, not have to worry about the little plastic. But overall, a uh, great controller to have. Um, again, they're brand new, so haven't heard about the flaws yet, but uh, so far, uh, I, I like what I see coming out of Honeywell this year in 2023. Now, it does have a USB-C uh, drive right here. I don't know what that's for. The documentation doesn't tell us uh, what that's for as far as I know. But uh, comment down below. Let me know what you think about this guy. What do you, what do you think about Honeywell this year? I think Honeywell is going to be the contender this year. Um, they, they kind of screwed a lot of people last year. Uh, but um, this year, they're coming out with some awesome stuff. And hopefully, I can get my hands on a TR-50 or learn a little bit more about it so I can let y'all know about it because that is a really cool device at a very low price point. So you can to get an IAQ sensor in a building for that that lower price is a steal. So watch out for Honeywell this year. Thanks guys for watching.